So, John, Michael. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. So last year we came through the IntelliHot booth uh, when you guys were just starting to launch your products. There's been a little bit of time between. You've got some new products. We're actually standing in front of one of your units. Why don't you walk us through what we're looking at right now? All right, so you're looking at the IQ1001. Yep. This is a million BTU tankless unit. Okay. So we take all of the tankless units that people would normally rack mount build their own manifolds, yep. and we do that for you right inside this cabinet. We give you a single point of connection right on the outside of our unit. So a million B2s, it's a very small footprint compared to a lot of commercial domestic hot water. Roughly, what does this weigh? Uh, but what's the weight on a 750? Somewhere, somewhere around 750 there? pounds, that's somewhere not much. There, so yes. is it designed with a footprint? It looks like this footprint was designed to go through a door. We can actually get it into through the mechanical doorway. room into an elevator if nice. need be. Yes. Uh, that sometimes, believe it or not, so as you know, I know you've worked in the industry, yes. I've worked in the industry, the little oversight of we need to be able to fit it into the mechanical room can be a bit of a challenge. Yes. Can we pull the door off and we can sure have a can. sneak peek inside of it? Yes. Okay, so as we look at it, you've got a polypropylene assembly on the top. Why don't you just sort of walk us through what's inside this unit? Yep, so we have the polypropylene exhaust manifold here. Each one of our units ties into the manifold. These are called hexes, heat exchangers. Okay. Uh, each one of these is rated for 250,000 BTU. Okay. So we've got built-in redundancy. If yeah, one of so these we can see there's two in the front, two in the back going into a common header assembly? Correct. Gotcha. So we got the gas manifold here. We've got our hot water out manifold here. And then we have our cold water manifold on the bottom okay. with flow control valves attached to each one of the units. And so it's a down-fired heat exchanger design in these Correct. units, similar to like a condensing boiler setup. Yes. Okay, and so from the standpoint of this unit, what are some of the features that are built into the controls of this? Like how easy is it for a contractor to install this unit? So whether you're working on our small wall mount 199, yeah. or you're working on a 3 million B2 unit, all the components are identical in each one of the units. So I would basically just have one, two, three, or four, depending on the size of the unit. Or up to 12. God, yes. Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yes. That's a pretty impressive. And so as we look at this unit, what are some of the other features that are built into this? Like, could I integrate this with a building automation system? Yes. What kind of downturn, like modulation rate? What, what's this unit look like? Uh, it depends on which unit, but each one of these is about eight to one turn down. Okay, and what kind of water temperature can this unit deliver? Uh, up to 190 degrees. Wow, so 190 degree water, and what sort of efficiency? I'm not gonna hold you to an exact uh, number, but rough efficiency? 97%, I believe, what wow. our rating is. Really? Yes. That's very, very impressive. And this is specifically designed just for domestic hot water. Like Correct. People are not applying this in any sort of heating application. No, not at all. Okay. And so installation-wise, where do you guys have these installed right now? I know you have some in Canada. You have a whole bunch in the United States as well? Correct. A lot of hotel industries have them. Um, restaurants have smaller footprinted ones. Right. So I mean, we have a, a breadth of you know customers and then restaurants to hotels. as far as temperature lift goes it's pretty much traditional like i'll get that 67 degree lift typically on this unit like i would with any other sort of domestic hot water you're setup. referring to like 77 degree yeah rise you got type it yeah, yeah, yeah yes that's very cool so, so it's all based on your delta t you know how much ground water temperature is to your set point is what right. it's going to deliver so what is the actual technology advantage like why would somebody want to do this in lieu of doing the more traditional tankless array that they like to put you know seven or eight tankless units on the wall to achieve the same million btus what's Just, the intellihot advantage we give a compact solution space is premium in a lot of locations yeah so we do it right here in one application like i said single point of connection they like that, so they're not spending all their time building the rack system. Right. We roll this in, we connect to the plumbing, they're in and out in a day. Yeah, so as somebody who's done a lot of residential and commercial work, I see the advantage of this being that you have redundancy in parts, the yes. fact that you have similar heat exchangers, combustion motors, everything is all the same inside of the unit, I like that. And to your point, if I had to bank five of these, and install them, I've got all the piping and I've got all the liability of did I do it all right, is everything set up? Yes. And I've got to do combustion set up for multiple units. Yes. Very cool. You've got some other units you're gonna show us. So you actually got a unit around the corner, you can show us the control and what it looks like. Do you mind walking us over yeah. so we can see it? Uh, you're talking about the control, like this control here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's look at the baby sister. I'm gonna call it the baby sister. Let's look at this <laughs> unit if we could. So right. can you walk us through the control yeah. on so this one? So the control on this one, we I haven't had a lot of experience on it, so it's similar to all of our gas, but there are yep. some differences on this one. So it's a plain English touchscreen yes. display that somebody can walk up and see the obvious things. You know, you got your set temp here. Yep. You can change your temperature here. Okay. You can go in here and get more data, flow and temp. This is key to how the unit's operating. Very cool. Uh, what our flow rates are. 
what the uh, thermal battery is charged at on this unit. Yeah. So that's the amount of heat stored in our battery. And then you've got your water temperature in and water temperature out. So let's talk a little bit about this unit because I am very passionate about thermal batteries. One of my things I've been, I'm going to use the word ranting on the internet about, <laughs> sure. is people that want to store watts and not BTUs. And the reality is if you look at the North American market, predominantly we need more BTUs thermally than we do for like LED lighting, right? Sure. So I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing the electric storage, but right. something like this makes sense. So this unit has a battery in the bottom of it. Correct. Can you walk us through just the overview of what that's like? So the the, the thermal battery is a tank that stores glycol in it and we have a heat exchanger that's inside that where the heat transfer takes place and that's how we provide the tankless part of the hot water delivery. Right, so basically this battery in the bottom has a very large surface area coil inside of it yes. that allows you to get the heat transfer because I saw you had it down to even 120 degrees. Correct. So this unit has a lot of capacity in that yes. battery. How much energy roughly could we store in this battery? Uh, I know it kind of catches off guard there, right? But like, yeah. is this designed for a light commercial application, a larger commercial application? So, two of these would be able to go in place of like a 199, okay, 100 perfect. gallon, gotcha. like a, a restaurant application. Gotcha. So, so and the controls themselves, you guys are making your own controls, designing yes. your own software. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that really gets overlooked is I really like that the display you're looking at represents the product itself. Exactly. I can see the flow rates. But the other thing I like about it is that me, having never seen this control before, I can tap the screen and go, okay, I want to go into the history and see what the unit is doing. Yes. If you need a manual to figure the control out, <laughs> the number one thing we forget to do is RTFM, read the free manual. Yes. <laughs> which also leads to warranty issues, right? So it's really cool that you guys have built a very simple display. Like, I can already tell that it's got a remote Wi-Fi connection. I know sure. very easily how to get back. I can check my flow and temps. And again, I've never seen this until you right. showed it to me now. And then you can go into the life of the unit. This is gonna tell you like parts that may need to be replaced, how long the life is on those parts. Um, let's see. You can hold down on the water valve. It's actually gonna give you that part number. So if a contractor is standing here, go, oh, hey, very I, need, cool. I need a new water valve. Yeah, yeah. What's the part number? Well, there's the part number. Then That's they can smart. go on our website if they needed to and order that part. That's very smart. So you've got a, uh, a smaller unit to this that just over here. Can we have a quick look at that? So it's yeah. basically a, a smaller version smaller of a large version 1 of the million BTU. Yes. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that. Excuse us, guys. You brought everybody. This is, a, Sorry. this is not a carrier. Oh, so this one's pretty cool. So this one you've actually got a cutaway on it as well. So it looks quite similar. Same touchscreen display. So all of them use the same software. Same software, correct. Very nice. Very nice. Just have a quick look in the bottom. So in the bottom here, basically, what have, what all have we got in the bottom of this unit? As you just sort of walk us through it. So we got your cold water inlet here. Yep. You've got recirc building return here. Uh, we've got a bypass valve here that opens up and allows cold water to bypass. This is considered our low loss header, okay. so we can maintain a better pressure on the system. Gotcha. And you guys actually have integrated recirc in this unit. So if you yes, go into a building with recirculation, you can just connect it in there. Well, right, but this recirculation is just internal to the unit. Oh, okay. And you need your building recirc to actually come gotcha. in here. Gotcha. You can also plumb your recirc into your cold water line. Okay. Some of the nice features with the 199, we have a built-in pressure sensor, so we okay. know what the water pressure is coming into the unit. Yep. We also have a gas pressure sensor. Good. So if there's issues with supplying water pressure to right. the unit, we're going to know about it. Right. It's going to be alerted to you on your phone, or if the gas pressure drops too low, we're going to know about it. Well, also from an installation standpoint, if you put this unit into a building for whatever reason, if you've got a situation where the regulator is too far away yes. and you're not getting good gas pressure, it'll shut the unit off, I'm assuming, yes. prevent any sort of issues because obviously we don't want to be running units with a, with combustion that hasn't been set up properly. We're tested down to two and a half inches of water column, Okay, but you'll get an alert at three inches of water column that you've got low gas pressure. Gotcha. Now, will the unit derate as the actual pressure drops or no, is it just a it warning not. to you that it's going no, to... it's a warning. Very but good. if it gets too low, it will shut it off. Okay. Yeah. And as we look inside of the unit, basically the components here are the same as the first unit we looked yes. at. It's just one set. Yep. I really like the and cutaway the of the cutaway. heat exchanger, right? Yes. Because you can really see what we were talking about earlier, where you've got this internal heat exchanger with a lot of surface area. 22 feet, stainless, three-quarter inch. Very nice. Well, weldless, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. It's really good seeing that unit. Yep. And then you can actually see the burner right here. Okay. Awesome. Awesome.
Well, definitely appreciate you taking the time to show us the equipment. Sure. We've seen you guys before. I'm sure we'll see you again in the future. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can get you up into Toronto. We can actually get on a job and film an installation and actually see it running in here. Right I'm based out of Detroit, so it's real close. Well, let's make it happen. <laughs> All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks guys. Man. Yep.